So let's take a look at some of the uh, physics that we can set up really easily using the scene editor. Uh, I've got my player selected and just over here I'm going to scroll down to physics definition. There's a few settings here, bounding rectangle. And hopefully you can kind of see that there's a rectangle around the guy now. If we go over here to bounding circle, you get this big old circle around the guy. Of course you could adjust these programmably, but I think from here on out, most of you are going to want to go with alpha mask. And you'll notice that the physics body of this is now actually defined by the alpha channel in the texture itself. So if you're to collide with uh, this little guy, all these kind of little nuances of the texture are actually in there and you can see that some of my settings in here are already checked off for dynamic allows rotation and affected by gravity the only problem is by the time this loads up this guy will probably have already dropped down to the bottom of the universe so let's let's see if we can keep our eye on him uh, Yoink, he's out of here. Okay, so uh, one thing that we should co we should uh, consider doing is setting up a boundary around our physics world. So let's go over here to our game scene, and we should be able to just do this right away. Let's say self dot physics body equals sk. Oops, not that physics body, and then I'm going to put in here edge loop from path. From, I'm sorry, from rect, and then I'm just going to write in here self dot frame, and by doing so, I th think we should have basically caged in our uh, character inside of um, an edge, which uh, is a a massless uh, body. It doesn't actually have an interior to it. Okay, so you can sort of just think of it as, as walls that are the same size as the frame itself, and so there we go. We've got our little guy, and Boy, that's uh, that doesn't look too good. He looks like he might have hurt his head. But he is wearing a helmet though, so that's okay. Uh, one thing you could consider doing if you uh, didn't want that to happen right away is uh, making it so that the character cannot uh, rotate. So I'm going to click off allows rotation and let me save this. I'll do it one more time. I have noticed that there are some uh, occasionally some strange strange caching issues with uh, the simulator. If you ever need to reset it, you can go over here to reset content and, and settings. And uh, but sure enough, it looks like now he is uh, he's doing quite well. He's he's resting comfortably at the uh, the bottom of uh, the screen. And uh, let's play around with a camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a camera. Drop that guy right there. We'll call this the camera. Kind of a dumb name, but it'll work. And then let's go back over here to our game scene. And what I'm going to do is up here at the top, I'm going to write self dot camera is going to equal. Well, here's our little problem that we had from before. I could put in here self dot child node as name and then the camera, right? And then forcing it to be SK camera node which shouldn't fail because that is a camera uh, I'm kind of curious though what the uh, right right well we're gonna rewrite this code I'm gonna do the same exact thing we did over here where we first kind of safely check it so I'm gonna put in here some camera is gonna equal SK camera node self dot child node with name the camera put that over here as SK camera node and then what we'll do is write self dot camera it's going to equal some camera and of course we'll get rid of this line and we should now be using that camera that we placed in there and you'll notice he it seems like he fell through the the bottom of the <laughs> of the boundary but that's not actually true because it's our camera that's just offset at this point if you look at it right Normally, well, what we were seeing before from our viewport was just this area right here, but now we're using our actual camera. So if I wanted, I could move this right down here to ex kind of like exactly where he's going to fall. Uh, let's save it up, and then you'll see that he's going to be ba right about in the middle of the screen. So there you go. Uh, one cool thing you could do, let's, uh, let's just kind of put this floating off over this way and let's go over here to our game scene that swift file and we've already got an update statement written in here this is going to do code uh, every frame you know should be about 60 frames per second so what I could write is uh, da, 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 what did I do over here oh you know what I didn't actually um, 
Well, let's do this. This is a little bit safer. Watch. No, you know what? Let's cast this as. Um, we'll put in here our camera. SK camera node. Get an equal SK camera node. And then I'll put in here our camera equals some camera and then I'll make that our camera this way I can reference our, our camera anywhere I want and then I can come down here and I'll write our camera dot position is going to equal player dot position and I don't think it's going to complain about that but let's just find out and I realized uh, just in the in the very end of the last video I actually had set uh, when I was testing this, I set this guy uh, to something other than soldier, right? Some of you guys might have caught that. Uh, so I did have to set that back, and then uh, everything should be fine. Uh, what you're going to see, though, is that it um, it doesn't really appear like anything's happening, but our, our camera is staying focused on exactly where the player is at. So the two are tracking each other, and to kind of prove this a little bit, let's go back over here to our game scene, and let's uh, print out the uh, position of ca the camera right uh, and then well, here let's just do the, the X position and then what I'm also going to do is in our update statement say player dot position uh, is going to equal and then we're going to put it here CG point make player dot position dot X so plus one we're going to add to that and then we'll just leave it at uh, wherever the player is at right now. So position dot uh, y. Okay, you wouldn't want to put zero in there because he's maybe not necessarily at zero. You're just going to want to leave his position unchanged on the y axis. So when we run this again, you're going to see, and you can see a little bit of a movement here. That's when he was actually just dropping down from the sky. But notice our camera is still tracking this guy, but he's actually moving at the same time so what we would really need is some kind of reference point inside the scene uh, so you could you could tell that he was actually going somewhere so for example what we could do is drag out here you know another one of our guys right and of course these guys are just gonna be standing still put them out here and they also don't have physics bodies Oh, but what the heck, let's make the last one have a physics body, just to see what happens. Oh, he's actually, oh, you know what, we're going to, so he doesn't fall down, let's, um, um, we're going to turn affected by gravity off on him. Okay, so here we go. Our guy's going to fall down, and he's going to start walking past, oh, this is going to be slow. So he's going to start walking past these guys, all right, that guy doesn't have a physics body, he is visually in front of the other guy, although we can set our z-depth anytime we want. Oh, and stupid me, <laughs> I forgot that we've got a, uh, a boundary inside of our scene. And you know what? I, I, I would have probably noticed that if I had turned on, let's see, oh, for some reason, it wasn't showing us our physics bodies. Well, that's a little strange. Go over here to your game view controller. If you ever do want to see uh, your physics bodies, you can do that by writing skview.shows physics equals true let's see uh, but of course that doesn't really help us with running into our other guy but I'm sure now you did actually see that um, this is in fact working it's a little bit clearer right now I, I just got a hankering though to see him tackle that one dude so let's uh, let's switch this back on over here we'll move him off to the side a little bit and here we go we'll just make this guy have a physics body okay so alpha mask, affected by gravity is no. Put him right over there so it doesn't take us forever to get to the, what we want to see. And boom, he's going to knock it. Well, I thought he was going to knock him over. <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> it is pushing him, though, that's for sure. So anyway, uh, let's, um, let's just see what happens when he goes to the wall. I mean, this is one of the things that I love about game development here in Xcode is okay, all right, well that makes sense. He's just gonna stay there. 
All right, so let's go get rid of that um, that print statement. When you run a print statement at every line, it is quite annoying. So our camera is certainly working. You know, if you wanted to offset the camera, that would be really easy. What you could do is uh, use a CG point make statement. So that's going to just adjust the X value and the Y value of that camera. And you could use the player.position.x, the player.position.y. Uh, let's leave the x as it is, so it's right in the um, middle of the screen. But then we can adjust where the um, where the camera is in relation to the, the y-axis of the player. So now when we run this, the camera is actually going to be 200 uh, points. I don't want to say pixels, 200 points above the player. So it's now kind of like focused right about here, which might, you know, make a little bit more sense for some sort of uh, side scrolling type game. And if we just wanted to uh, unleash a little weirdness in our game, we could uh, start moving the, uh, the the player around based on our uh, us touching the screen. So for example, let's take this out of here. And you know what, actually first, let's go over here to the top of the file. We're gonna create a Boolean variable. We'll, we'll call this is moving. A Boolean variable is just a simple on or off. So that's either gonna be true or false, yes or no. Well, true or false. And we'll say is moving equals false initially. And then when we touch down, here we can just put this outside of here. We'll say is uh, moving equals uh, true and copy this we're gonna change that to moved and then this will be touch is ended so these these touch statements are all set up the same way we're gonna say is moving it's false there we can get rid of this part let's get rid of this part and then we don't really need that on there because that's already been turned on uh, and then what we'll do is we'll say the player dot position is going to equal the location and the reason we have this is moving is let's make it so that he's not um, doing the things in the update statement when he's getting moved around so what we'll do is write in here if is moving equals false then in that case the camera can track and the player will just move around a little bit and uh, I think we've got it. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so he falls down. We grab him. Boom. Knocks over there. And uh, if you're noticing this kind of crazy, this weird pull down, it's because there's um, still a velocity or and gravity uh, affecting the body. So, you know, there's things that you could do to, to deal with that as well. So maybe when you touch down on them, you could say player dot velocity, um, sorry, player dot physics body dot velocity is going to equal uh, CG vector make and you're just going to put in here zero zero another thing you could do to reset it is player dot physics body dot angular velocity and keep in mind physics body is an optional property uh, so you can put this question mark right over here because we don't code doesn't know for sure if it does have a, a physics body but uh, this is a safe way of doing it even if it doesn't have a physics body it's it's um uh, that will fail gracefully so we can change our angular velocity to zero part the biggest problem though is probably just that gravity is still on uh, so there's a couple ways to do that you could put in here player dot uh, physics body dot uh, affected by gravity equals false and then when we let go of them again we'll set that back to being true you could also do it on the world itself it's probably not a good idea so now I've got him kind of you know you can see he's not really getting pulled down anymore and then boom drop him right back on there and of course the camera kind of jumps a little bit as you're tracking you know as it, when you let go it uh, it uh, it's not that smooth uh, you know there are ways of dealing with that too uh, let's think well you all got time don't you Let's create a, you know what, we'll do this in another video. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, start by working with actions uh, in the, the, the very beginning of the next video. We'll leave this scenario in place.